and um, when they um, do that, you know, most kids are able to manage that. Most kids love it. Um, but then there are some kids who just, you know, they don't have the support at home. They don't have the uh, funds or the time. Uh, they can't go do it. Um, so in the past, they've had to have an alternative assignment, um, which has always been lesser. It's, it's a video that they can watch and they pick from two different ones or something like that. Uh, with the Oculus Go and with some of these apps, I was able to um, make that not so much a lesser experience, make it into kind of a neat thing that they get to do. Um, so it kind of leveled the playing field, so to speak. Um, other uh, uses uh, in our education include augmented reality. Um, there is the uh, Quiver Vision app that Huang and Fong studied um, to examine the value of AR to early childhood education. Um, and it's simple. I wouldn't do it with my high school kids, but it involves uh, printing a coloring page from the app. You color it, excuse me, and then the character uh, kind of comes to life in 3D with the markings that you put on it um, mapped to it. Um, so um, definitely engaging for little kids. Uh, as far as uh, older kids, Kim and Kim suggest HP Reveal. Um, this is where uh, you have a trigger image and you might assign a famous work of art from a textbook uh, to a trigger image. Um, and then uh, when you scan it with the app, um, information about the artist or the you know, sort of cultural context of the piece uh, will appear over top of it. Now you might wonder, isn't that the same thing as using a textbook? And to some extent it is, but the idea is that you know no matter what it's a good thing if you're making learning less passive um, you're getting the, the student to make choices and manipulate things uh, as they go um, so i've used augmented reality uh, with the augment app um, it's an app where you uh, can create your own uh, digital models um, i have my uh, account pulled up and here is a model that i created um, i uh, created this using scanning software called scanact um, so Scanect um, is, uh, it runs from a, uh, if you look over here at me, uh, to your right, uh, it runs from an Xbox 360 um, Kinect camera, uh, which measures distance. So here I am sitting in front of it. Um, red is bad, um, but if I back up to here, you can kind of see it's like reading the three-dimensionality of me. Um, so I scanned myself using that, uploaded it to this website, and then assigned it a uh, tracker image. Uh, and the tracker image is like a really badly drawn business card. It likes things that, uh, that it can notice are different from other things. Uh, so I did this business card thing um, and printed it out. And then you scan it in the app, and it appears in your hand uh, as you look through the camera at the screen. Um, so I did that with students where they did uh, essentially a digital artifact. Um, they either scanned something or uh, sculpted something from scratch using Sculptress, uh, which is this program here. Um, it's not an engineering approach to 3D printing. It's more like a virtual ball of clay that you like pull around and manipulate. Um, and that's fine. Um, and uh, yeah, they really liked it. Um, so uh, moving on, um, in terms of uh, creativity in VR, um, a big thing and kind of uh, where I'm leaving off here is the idea of uh, doing a lesson on installation art. Um, installation art, of course, is where the art is a space that you're creating. And the viewer, instead of just looking at the painting, they actually walk into um, and sometimes even actively interact with the space. Um, it's very popular. It's very engaging. Um, it's like a big thing in the art world, but it's also not something that's practical to do uh, in really any classroom setting. Um, and even if you do, you're not going to have the funding to make it as cool as it could be. Um, so virtual reality is kind of like a perfect uh, use for that, um, using a, like a painting or sculpture app. Uh, so here we have Google Tilt Brush um, that you can get on HTC Vive and Oculus. Um, our library has uh, an HTC Vive, um, and I'm kind of planning a uh, project in which students collaborate to create virtual spaces. Um, and then they'll upload them to this poly website. Um, so here we have some uh, pieces that just users have done. Uh, this one's by Derek Perry. Um, and you can um, manipulate them and zoom in on them and kind of, you know, essentially recreate the idea of being there even without having a VR headset. Um, so it is digital art, and just like other forms of digital art, you can kind of save it, take it with you, um, finalize it, and so on. Um, so that's my uh, presentation. Um, here are sources. 
Uh, down in the video description, you'll find a link to uh, the uh, Google Slides of this presentation, as well as the paper that I wrote for it. Um, hopefully, uh, it was enjoyable and watchable. I'm a little bit new to this uh, 360 technology, but I kind of figured if I gave it a try um, in this context, I, it would give me some ideas uh, for, for using it with um, students and, and, and creating lessons with it. Um, so that's it. Thanks for watching.